G'day guys, Cam Wild Wild Touring and welcome to this week's episode. Tonight I'm actually away filming uh, an overnighter, not too far from home, but I wanted to take the opportunity to kind of wrap up the 300 series build and do a video on that as well. I'm not totally finished the build, I don't think you ever really are, but I'm 95% of the way there. Pretty much everything I set out to do on the car I've done. It's taken the best part of four months, which is not too bad really. Spent a lot of money on it, and I'm gonna do a different video in a few weeks time where I wrap up, uh, I condense essentially the entire build into like 10 minutes, so I can rattle through everything that went onto the car, who did it, and how much it costs to give a final tally of what a build like this costs. And that's not to gloat about how much I've spent on it. If anything, I'm quite embarrassed about how much I spend on cars. It's more just to be open and honest and transparent. Um, we all watch a lot of YouTube or TV or um, follow car builds on social media where people have like amazing extravagant setups. But if you don't know what they cost, then how do you ever know if they're achievable um, or, or where to set your goals if you wanna do something like that yourself. So just wanna be really open and honest about how much this thing cost me so that you guys know um, for planning your own builds and stuff. But anyway, that's a separate video. This one, I just wanna show you what's changed since the last build video. I'll start with what's going on on the roof because things have changed there. I took the car back to AGD Auto in Wangara to see Aaron and the boys there. They've done the bulk of this 300 series build, but their work is, I mean, they're Land Cruiser specialists. They, they really only work on 300s, 200s and 70 series Land Cruisers. That is their bread and butter. That's where their expertise is. So I will always take my car there from now on. Anyway, the first thing they did was fit a new roof rack. So as you know, I had a Yakima platform roof rack and the thing was so noisy. I took it home, um, I showed Tiff, we went for a drive in it and I knew straight away just looking at her face that I was gonna have to pull that roof rack off. Yakima do sell a front deflector that I could have fit to the front, but it requires um, some little vinyl dots that you stick on your roof lining and the deflector actually sits on that, on those stickers on your, on your um, paintwork, essentially. And I just wasn't really happy with that. So I got rid of the Yakima and at great expense, I bought an ARB base rack. And the reason that I landed on the decision to buy the ARB base rack was I did a lot of research on um, 300 series owners groups on Facebook, spoke to everyone that I knew, knew something in the industry about 300s and roof racks and whatnot. The general consensus was that ARB probably have the best design for reducing wind noise. And you can see why they should be quieter on road. They have got this wind deflector built in which doesn't sit on your paintwork, which I really like. And the sides, there's no holes and stuff like that in it. So there's just less area for wind to be channeled through and vibrate and make noise and stuff. I'm yet to take Tiff for a drive in it. Um, there definitely is some wind noise, but it's definitely improved. So um, I'll report back on that later with her findings because she's probably more <laughs> brutally honest about stuff like that. Anyway, uh, with the ARB's base rack, the Deflector was standard part of that. This was an optional extra, the ARB light bar. I just wanted to do anything I could to try break up that wind noise. When you're doing like 100K an hour and wind's just smashing into it, I, I just thought anything to break that up is gonna improve it. Plus you can never have too much light. So got a light bar up there as well, which seems to work pretty good. There's a bit more stuff going on top of that roof. Let me show you. So AGD fit these um, k on brackets for me. That is a set of, they're very easy to DIY fit yourself actually. They're Max Trax brackets, so I've gone for the side mounted ones. These are specifically made to fit the ARB base rack. I just haven't got my Max Trax up here yet because I need to get some, some pins and then the Max Trax will be up here side mounted. I'm really happy with those brackets because they took up bugger all room on the roof rack, which allowed me to fit all of this solar that I'll talk about later. I just want to quickly touch on the awning next. So the 30 second awning was up before when I had the Yakima roof rack. What's changed, it's the same awning, uh, of course, I love these 30 second awnings. What's changed is I'm using the K-On 270 degree awning brackets. They come in a pack of three and they had uh, a lot of adjustability in them. So I don't know if you can see there on the back, but they can be, just, they can be adjusted up, down, forwards, backwards. Um, and it allowed me to mount the awning significantly higher than it was previously on the last rack. So that now when I've got the tailgate open, the awning totally clears that tailgate. There's no risk of it touching. Whereas before it was just ever so gently resting on top of the tailgate, 
which meant I have to drop a leg every time to take that pressure off the tailgate. So really happy with that, it's come together really well. While it was at that AGD Auto, I also got Aaron to source and fit a pair of ARB side steps. And to be honest with you, I'm pretty pissed off about what ARB delivered. Bear in mind that you'll remember when I got the ARB Summit bull bar put on, the first one was um, dented and scratched. Their first reaction was, there's nothing in, in the state, there's nothing in the country, we can't get you a replacement for three months or four months. And I already had my bumper cut, cars on the hoist, waiting for the bull bar to go on. So I was pissed off about that. ARB came through and supplied, um, they somehow found a bull bar and I don't know where it came from, but they supplied me with another bull bar and my car was able to leave AGD's workshop with a bull bar on. You wouldn't believe it. The same thing has happened with the side steps. So these were on order for some time. The other side fits perfectly. This side, can you notice that the gap at the front, there's probably a 30 mil gap between the sill and the side step. And on the back, there's like a 10 mil gap. I haven't hit anything. The way that the brackets are mounted on the step, they're mounted on the piss. And Aaron's noticed straight away as he's fitting them. And bear in mind, to fit these things, you've got to drop the fuel tanks and all the rest of it. So it's, it's a, a bigger job than fitting side steps on most vehicles. So he's dropped the fuel tanks, mounted that, that um, side step, couldn't tell that there was anything wrong with it until it was in place. And then he saw that it was sitting on the piss like this. And when he's contacted ARB and said, look, again, guys, there's something wrong with this. Can you send me a replacement? They said, yeah, no worries, but there's nothing in the country. It's going to take three months. So fit these side steps. The customer can do whatever he wants with them. Um, and in three months time, when there's another one in stock, we'll give you a replacement. But that means going back to the mechanic, car's back on the hoist, fuel tanks are dropped again. There's hours and hours of labor there. And guess who's paying for it? Anyway, let me know what you think about that because I just, I don't think that's right. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm cranky about that. Anyway, side steps. Other than them being bent and whatnot, it was a, something that I needed. It's a necessity to help uh, the kids get into the back of the car and also to protect the seals from um, getting smashed on rocks and stuff. So yeah, I'll get that sorted and I'll get over it, I'm sure. We better talk about all this solar on the roof. So the car went back to Off-Road Living who did the extensive 12 volt lithium battery set up in the back of this car. I've got 400 amp hour of lithium batteries in the back. To power that, we needed a heap of solar up top. So this is a huge system and I'll explain why it's so big because I don't, I don't think the average person needs something this big. I think it's overkill for a lot of people. But we've squeezed three 135 watt, giving me a total of 405 watts of solar up here. These are all spark panels from Off-Road Living. That's their brand. Andy, their uh, auto electrician, has done a magnificent job fitting them. They're mounted with side brackets. He's also put front brackets on too, so that you're not getting wind channeled underneath the brackets there. So he's done a, a marvelous job. Now he's wired them in series. I'm able to do that because I'm running a Victron DC-DC charger with a fairly high voltage uh, input capabilities. So those three panels running in series, which gives me 40 to 50 volts coming in, gets converted down to 12 volts to charge my 12 volt batteries through the Victron DC-DC charger. And I'm getting, I've had over 20 amp coming in through that for most of the day. So combine that with the fact that I'm also running a separate DC-DC charger to charge the car from the alternator as I'm driving. I can have both those inputs coming in. So I can have 30 amp from the alternator, 20 amp from the solar, gives me 50 amp charging. And I'm not putting too much load on the alternator because I know that I'm gonna have the caravan attached as well. And that alternator is gonna be able to charge the battery bank in the car and also the battery bank in the caravan. So both the caravan and the car are wired up in similar ways, high voltage solar panels, separate controllers for solar, separate controllers for, for DC input from the alternator. And that is the secret to ramming in as much current as you can to recharge big battery banks in short periods of time. So um, Off-Road Living just knocked it out of the park with the van and the car. The electrical system is just killer. It is so good. Now, I'm sure I've talked about this in previous videos, but for those that have missed them, the reason I've got such a big battery bank in this car and such a large solar array is because Tiff and I found that um, we had heaps of, we've got heaps of solar on the van We've got 1,085 watts on the van and 480 amp hour at 12 volt in, in lithium capacity as well in the caravan. So combined we have nearly, nearly 1,500 watts of solar and nearly 
uh, 900 amp of uh, amp hour of battery bank. So huge system. But what we found traveling around Australia with the caravan was that often you're parked in places that your caravan's going to be parked in places that are in some partial shade. And the reason for that is many designated campgrounds will tell you where you can park your van. And that means that you can't move your van for maximum solar yield. Like you can't move into the open area that gets maximum sun um, and chase as much sun as you can. Which means after, it doesn't matter how big your system is, if you haven't got solar coming in and you're not driving your van around, you're gonna get four or five days, whatever it is, and you're gonna run out of battery capacity. So there's, most people to get around that run generators, which I'm not keen on, or they run portable solar panels, which I am keen on and I'll talk more about later. But yeah, they use one of those two options to be able to get some more charge in uh, when they're in partial shade. I plan to use this car as a mobile portable solar panel solar generator. I can move the car. I can't move the caravan easily, but I can move the car very easily out into the sun. We go away for the van's parked up in shade, but we take the car out for day trips to go down to the beach or to go for a drive into town or to go get a coffee somewhere or go full driving, whatever. As I'm driving that car, I'm recharging this battery bank. I can get back to my campsite and I can back charge the caravan, which is depleted from being in partial shade. I can back charge the caravan with the charge that I've just put into the car through the inverter um, with an extension lead straight into the input on the side of the caravan. Absolutely not a necessity for everyone. It's just a luxury. It's something that we're able to do. So we're making the most of it. And it means that we can have some of those luxury items like the kids have day sleeps. Well, Brody has day sleeps during the day. We can travel in shoulder seasons when it's humid or hot. And I can run that air con during the day so Brody can get a good sleep. Um, we can run air fryers so the kids can have a quick meal or whatever. All those kinds of things. So that's why I've got such a big battery system. That's why I've got so much solar on the car. I can't wait to show you that in practice. I'm really looking forward to doing some traveling with this setup. And I wanna to get to one of those campsites and show you exactly how it works. I wanna move the car into the sun. You'll see the, fan, the van part back in the shade. Extension lead running, back charging the van. I reckon, I reckon it's gonna work really well. Another thing that's recently changed on the car that you may not have noticed just glancing at it is that the car's been ceramic coated. Now, I've never been great at looking after the paintwork on cars. Mechanically, I've always done everything I can to look after vehicles. <clears throat> Cosmetically, especially in terms of the paintwork, I had to do a bit of a crash course in learning um, how to look after it, how to wash the car properly um, so it doesn't end up looking uh, chalky and oxidized and crap in a couple of years time. So to protect your paint, I learned that there's essentially two ways of going about it. Um, the first one is a paint protection film, and that is like a, a plastic wrap that wraps every panel, kind of like contact, contacting your books or whatever for your kids at school. It's a physical wrap that goes all over the car. That's probably the best level of paint protection against scratches because you're, you're adding like a really thick layer of stuff on top of the paint. Now, there's varying brands and materials and stuff that you can use to do that, but the premium stuff, the really good quality stuff is expensive. And I mean, to do a car like mine, to do both sides, the roof, the tailgate, the bonnet and all the rest of it, you're probably looking at the best part of eight grand, maybe more. I just couldn't justify it for the price. I think it's the best way, it's the premium way to protect your paintwork. I bought a white car base spec cruiser because I look at cars like a tool. They get me to beautiful places like this. I want them to be reliable so they always get me home. I want them to be capable on and off road. I want them to be comfortable. I want them to be safe. Scratches don't worry me. I've never been bothered about scratches, especially on a white car. To be honest with you, you don't really notice scratches on a white car, not unless you, it's scratched so deep that you take paint off it. So I'm not too bothered about the scratches. So I ceramic coated the car. Now ceramic coating, this is the way it was explained to me. Paint has uh, imperfections and stuff all over the surface of it. And that's what dirt and stuff sticks to because it can hold onto it, it can get a grip on it. So ceramic coating, it's a bottle of serum that's got something that hardens. So you apply it, you wash your car really, really, really well. You apply this serum, thing in it that makes it liquid flashes off and it leaves a hard physical layer uh, that should be evenly distributed across your paint, which makes it sm absolutely smooth like ceramic. So it hasn't got all the holes and the porousy bits and all the rest of it. The benefits of that are, it's another physical layer on your paint to protect it from light scratching, 
from bird poo, uh, harsh cleaning chemicals, all that kind of stuff, or from you cleaning your car and, and rubbing grit and stuff into it, it's gonna offer a, an amount of protection from all those things. I don't have to actually rub the car really to wash it anymore. I can pretty much just snow blast it and then high pressure hose it and 95% of all the crap that's on it is just gonna drop off. So it makes it heaps easier to wash. Aaron from Dentless is a bloody champion. And I don't get anything out of saying this, by the way, guys. This is just something that he's offered for you guys so you can save some money if you're interested in doing this. Um, there's no kickback for me or anything. He will do a package for anyone that mentions this video or mentions Wild Touring. He'll do a package on ceramic coating and the ceramic tint if you want both done. Uh, he'll, he'll give you 10% off that. And he's a really good dude. He's active on social media. So shoot him a message on Instagram or give him a phone call. Anyway, that's the ceramic coating. Looks wicked. Thrilled with it. Next for the car, um, I want to get that side step fixed. That's annoying me. I need to get the pins for the Max Tracks brackets. I'll weigh it all again later on. Uh, next time we do a big van trip or whatever and see where we're at. Maybe a winch, definitely a, a long range tank. And I reckon that's about it. Hey, um, we got new shirts. They're really plain. It's just this, this Wild Touring logo on the front. There's nothing on the back. Uh, I've got them in this maroon burgundy sort of color. And I've also got them in an army green. I just wanted something really simple, classic, if you're interested in buying a couple of those. I've also got the same design in women's shirts now, and it's a proper women, woman's cut. And I've got them in pale pink and a black. Same deal, just the front breast logo, nothing on the back. So if you want to support the channel and, and wear some Wild Touring merch, I'd love you to do that. Website's wildtouring.com.au. And um, there's a heap of, of merch on there, including these new shirts. I'm going to set my camping gear up crack a beer, cook a feed before it gets dark. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. Next video um, in relation to the touring build will be the final bill, how much it cost me to build it. So um, keep an eye out for that if you're interested. Thanks, guys. See you soon.